Are you still on the lookout for a decent budget mini PC? Well the one we're looking at today is the GMK Tech Notebox G2. You can get them fairly cheap and they use the Intel N100 processor. Is it worth the cash? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So this sample was sent to us for review from GMK Tech. We've not been paid for this review and all opinions are our own. The box is standard GMK Tech and this label here tells us what's inside. A G2, 12 gig, one terabyte. Indy Jones. And there it is. It's actually really small. It's about the same size as the width of my hand and surprisingly light. I mean, this thing is so compact, it could fit in your pocket. A pocketable mini PC. Let's see what else we have. Inside this piece of card, we have the manual. And as I'm in Japan, this is in Japanese, English, and Chinese. At the bottom, we have a box of important stuff, which includes a vase mount for attaching your mini PC to the back of a monitor, a red lid if you want to change colors, a HDMI cable, approximately one and a half meters in length, and a power adapter. The cable's roughly 110 centimeters in length, and it's 12 volts, three amps, with a USB-C connector. And finally, a warranty card. The lid is plastic with a nice texture. We've got an Intel sticker, nice logo in the middle, and it's fairly simple. Moving to the front now, we've got the on and off switch, and it clicks. Yay. On the right, we have three USB 3.2 ports. There's a logo here, it stands for super speed, which means up to five gigabits per second. On the back, we have the USB-C, which is for power. And we have two one gigabit per second LAN ports. Over here, we have the three and a half mil audio jack, and underneath the fan exhaust vents. All of our hot air gets blown out here. Moving to the left side, we have two HDMI 2.0 ports. And on the right, DP 1.4. According to GMK Tech, this only supports 4K at 60 Hz. And down here, we have a Kensington lock. Kensington? Underneath, we have a label and two screws for the vase mount. Here and here. Removing the lid is pretty simple. All you need to do is just pull it off. We're greeted with a friendly reminder. There's a small arrow on the inside of the lid, and that shows us which way it should go around. Just match it up with the arrow that's inside the case, and simply click it in. We're also sent a blue lid to check it out, and in this case, we found it to be a bit bright. Maybe a duller blue or a darker text will give it a bit more balance. While we have the top off, let's have a look inside. The SSD is quite easy to access, and it's a 2242 SSD by Future Path. And we are going to go with red. It's about time for the size comparison. The GMK Tech Notebox G2 is much faster and only slightly larger than the original Chewy Lark Box. With the same CPU, the G2 is dwarfed by the Chewy Lark Box X. Here's the B-Link Mini S. And a Tobidase Kubitsu. Let's spice things up a little with some Tabasco. It's about half the size. And a Roy Bosch tea bag. I'll need that for a cuppa. Here are the specs. We've seen the M100 process before, we can expect decent Windows performance. There's 12 gigs of DDR5 and a very generous one terabyte SSD. The 2480Us on the GPU will be good enough to run games with low requirements. We would like to have seen more USB ports, but with DisplayPort 1.4 and USB-C for power, it separates it from the other N100 mini PCs. Attaching the vase mount is fairly straightforward. Two screws in here, and two screws at the back of the monitor, and slide on. We'll be using the HDMI cable, a Logitech dongle for the wireless keyboard and trackpad, USB-C for power, and we're good to go. On first boot, we're greeted with the Windows setting screens. We'll need to give it information such as language, region, things like that, and you'll be Windows in no time. So the specs all check out, and we have Windows 11 Pro. To activate, we just need to go online, we need Wi-Fi, but LAN connection would be fine too. And there we have it. We're activated. So now we can use Windows Update to get the latest patches. And finally, we can play. First thing we'll do is go to Ninite.com, get some free software, and we can use things like OpenOffice. This is the free version of Office, and it works a charm. If we need something for 2D graphics, they have Krita, and it works pretty good on this little mini PC. We could do some shopping online, Found this telephone on Aliexpress, but it seems to be a smartphone. Might be something for the Wicked Gamer and Collector. 
Here's YouTube in 4K. Or you could sit back and watch some Netflix. Moving on to the benchmarks now, here's Crystal Disk Mark. We have some fairly average speeds for a SATA SSD. Here's the user benchmark, and even though the score is fairly low, it's slightly higher than the Chewy Lockbox X, which is then turned on its head by looking at the 3D Mark score. As this stresses the system, it could be needing some extra watts or just thermal throttling. Here's some Geekbench. And finally, Cinebench. Single core performance is not bad, and the multi-core score sits us in the area of fourth generation i5. Rather than just look at numbers, we'll connect our controller via Bluetooth and try some gaming. First up, the Expender Bros. Command and Conquer Remaster Collection. Warhammer 40k, bolt gun. Let's lower the resolution to 720p to get a reasonable frame rate. CSGO. While you can play the game in a pinch, the frame rate isn't stable, probably due to single channel memory and the GPU. Here's Dota 2, 720p and the slider set to performance. And last up, some Grid Autosport. Some fairly decent performance from this budget chip. At idle, the power draw was from 9 to 10 watts. And when under load while playing Grid Autosport, the system was pulling 21 watts, making this a very efficient PC. When the system is idle and cool, the fan turns off completely. And here's the fan at full speed. Let's take a look at the BIOS. We have a nice range of options here, we can even raise the power limit. Given the system 30 watts rather than the 25 at stock, we can raise the performance to be back in line with the other REN100 PCs on the market. We found the fan settings to be a bit more for the casual Windows user, so you might want to fiddle with this so it's not spontaneous. We can also change the LED colour settings. We've got blue, red, greed, violet, yellow, white, and the last colour, cyan. You can also disable it. The light wraps around the bottom of the PC, which looks a lot nicer in the dark. If you need secure boot, you can enable it here, but we're going to leave it turned off so we can try simulation with Batocera. We'll first start off in the arcade, Neo Geo, Bellstock 2. It's Killer Instinct on main. It's Good Race on the Sega Mod 3. Moving on to computers now, here's Jim Power, Amiga. Ganja Farmer, MS DOS. And now for the consoles Sega Taxi, Dreamcast. God of War Chains of Olympus on the PSP. Ridge Racer 5 on the PlayStation 2. This is one times resolution, but can upscale it to 720p. It still runs full speed. F0 GX for the GameCube. Mina no Rizim Tenkoku on the Wii. Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U. It's running very good with the occasional dips.
Right on. And finally, Halo on the Xbox. It's about time for the pros and the cons. This tiny PC is great value for money. If snappy in Windows, will be ideal as a student or family PC. And it's also perfect if you want a little computer for emulation. Unfortunately, 3D gaming in Windows is limited, and it's a shame we only have three USB ports. So what do you guys think of this small computer? We reckon it's a perfect upgrade from the Raspberry Pi 4. As we finish up with a bit of Ganja Farmer, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandori, we make video reviews like this, video guides, and fix them cheap arcade boxes, as well as the A500 Mini. If you want to help support our work, please jump on, or a simple like and subscribe would do us a solid. Anyway, this has been the Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! I'm still waiting for Pandori 500.